game today, the ultimate leader, a guy that doesn't rely on his athleticism to get it done, one of the ultimate competitors, and you put him in that Miami Heat culture, along with one of the best coaches in the game today, in Eric Spolcher, with Jimmy Butler, and bam, and I'm not going to say his last name, because I don't feel like he and Christine and Dominique laugh today, <laughs> but I'm going to give y'all a laugh, and bam, out of the bayou, okay? Nailed you put it. him in there with bam, <laughs> and that Heat culture, he fits, it's a perfect marriage, okay? Kyle Larry is a guy that is not going to let up. He's a guy that's going to keep coming. That's what Jimmy Butler is accustomed to. That's what Eric Spoelstra and his heat coach loves and they embrace. If the Miami Heat could get Kyle Larry, of course there will be a yeah. threat in the Eastern Conference. Now, would I pick him? Probably not, but there definitely be a threat. <laughs> I guess I guess you and I can define threats differently <laughs> because unless something is going to happen to the Nets or something is going to happen to the we'll return to what we saw uh, the player he was in the bubble and bam out of Bayou you're right he's an outstanding player but let's look around that conference they are not a real threat adding Kyle Lowry and I appreciate what you said about him never having relied on his athleticism so maybe aging the fact that he's 35 doesn't matter as much and maybe he can go down there to heat culture he already frankly embodies the heat culture so I think all of that makes sense they become a better team he fits down there that's all great but they don't become better than the Bucks they don't become better than the Nets so no, unless Dominic, then we're going to have a catastrophic year like we had this year with injuries or something, they are not coming out of there where people are healthy and if no, everybody's healthy and at top strength, they're not getting past either of those two teams. I, Dom, Dominic, we do realize that this same my, this Miami Heat team went to the finals last year, right? Yeah. Two I remember. They were presented remember. the Eastern Conference. Okay, and so and so, no disrespect to to Goran Dragic, and no disrespect to Kendrick Nunn, but Kyle Lowry is a serious upgrade from those two players. And right. one of the most important positions in the NBA is the point guard position. Who's going to be the leader to be the floor general? It's so many times that we have watched Jimmy Butler and Bam have to run the point forward or Jimmy Butler have to slide to the point where he have to orchestrate the offense instead of worry about getting buckets. That wears him down. You Now you add Kyle Larry, a guy where Eric Spoelstra don't have to call sets every time down. A guy that's going to make sure he put Jimmy Butler in position to be successful to put the ball in the basket. A guy that's going to to get Bam easy, good looks because of the way that he attacks and put pressure on the defense. Again, I'm not picking the Heat to come out the East, right. but let's not sit up here and disrespect them and say I'm, that they're not I, going to be a threat. Yeah, I, I'm not looking to disrespect them, but they're not going to be a threat to come out of the East. So I think we agree on that. You Adding Kyle Lowry is a talent upgrade. You're right about Dragic and uh, Kendrick Nunn. They are not the player that Kyle, uh, Kyle Lowry is, but they still do not compare to the talent that you're going to see in New York with the Nets or in Brooklyn with the Nets or in Milwaukee with the Bucks. So unless we're going to go back to the bubble, which the way y'all people is acting, maybe we will end up in a bubble next year. Then I'll pick the Heat to go to the finals potentially because that season will be different. It'll again be about a mentally tough team, which the Heat are. But if that doesn't happen, it's going to be about talent, and they don't have the talent, even if you add Lowry to jump past the Bucks. Dominique, Dominique, do you, do you know you have to mentally, being mentally tough in any atmosphere, whether it's in a bubble or not, you have to be mentally tough to win a championship. Agreed. Giannis had to be mentally my okay then. So well, don't, that's not even an argument. Don't move the goalposts. I'm not. You moving have the to be post. mentally tough. I'm like, saying that yes, there you is are, a you talk. Listen, go, go ahead. I'm <laughs> trying to tell you if you look at Giannis and what he did against the Phoenix Suns, being down. 
0-2 the start of the series and winning four straight and dropping a 50-piece to close them out, your mental has to be different. You, has to, you have to be mentally Agreed. tough. You have to be mentally tough and locked in and focused to go up to the free throw line and to keep attacking the basket, knowing that they're going to foul you and put you on the free throw line and go 17 for 19 from the free throw What it comes down to oftentimes in the playoffs is who has the yeah. most talent. The most talented team no, normally no, wins no. in the NBA playoffs. In football playoffs, it's yeah, oftentimes okay. Okay. There's a different ranking of that, okay. and it's a lot of times it's health, and it's a lot of luck okay. because it's a single game playoff. It's a lot of a lot more coaching than in basketball, and then also talent matters. So I'm saying that all those things matter, uh, but depending uh, uh, on the circumstances, different things matter more. The Heat went to the finals in that bubble year because uh, mental toughness was at a premium that year, and this is quite possibly one of the most tough teams mentally in the league. I'm saying that this coming season, it's not going to matter nearly as much. It's going to go back to normal and where talent kind of prevails. And that's what's going to uh, happen. They still don't have the talent to get them past it. The mental uh, toughness is going to get them to the playoffs. It may get them to a game seven in round two. But that's not going to be enough to get them past the Nets. Like, it's just not. I don't care how tough their brains are. They're not going to be able to uh, outscore them three boys in Brooklyn. Nick, really quick uh, question. Okay, and I'm not saying think... that they're not. Go ahead. I was going to say, do you think that the Heat need one more piece and then they're yeah. actually contenders in the East? I think that's that's it. Honestly, like I think if they add one more piece, I'm not sure if that piece is out there, honestly. Like this year's free agency class is, is not one with a big home run hitter in it necessarily unless Kawhi decides to do something that, that we were will all be surprised by. Like I think Kyle Lowry is probably the guy who's the best fit for them out there, but they're going to have to find – Somebody else make another move throughout the course of the upcoming season in order to be a real threat. Every game, come in with confidence. My game is running strong. Ain't no cool and wrong. I've been in the trenches and won't be that way for long and go like. First take back with the Clippers forward, Kawhi Leonard has declined his $36 million player option to become a free agent. That was confirmed to Woj on Sunday. Leonard is expected to negotiate a new deal to remain with the Clips. He can potentially sign a four-year, $176.2 million deal, or he could do a one-and-one and, one and become a free agent in 2022 when he could sign a five-year deal worth $235 million. Just think about it. Look at what they done and look at what they gave up to to just even when Kawhi got there to even embrace and help Kawhi get to that point of going to the Clippers, trading for Paul George, giving up everything in the world, including draft uh draft picks and all everything. I mean they was their back was against the wall. And when you look at what the Clippers, how they have catered to Kawhi Leonard, and Kawhi Leonard, you know, have delivered when healthy, he has delivered in great fashion. Look, I believe that the Clippers should want Kawhi Leonard back long term. Listen, at the end of the day it's a uh ACL uh tear and I get it. It's not an injury that we just could overlook and downplay. It is something that's going to have him sidelined for months or possibly the whole entire year. But